I'm joined now by Thomas Fessy, Senior DR Congo Researcher at Human Rights Watch. Thomas, thanks very much for taking the time to speak to us. Now, what more have you learned about the way that the M23 operates? We we know that it is has long terrorised communities in the east of the country. It's recently rejected accusations of murder. What is there new in the report that you have released this week? Thomas, unfortunately, I think we have we, uh, you may still be on mute. We can't hear you currently. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, please. So I was saying that uh, we've been uh, documenting new crimes by the uh, Rwandan back rebel group um, in uh, different parts of uh, Rutshuru territory in, in North Kivu. And they're basically leaving uh, behind uh, their advance a growing trail of war crimes. We've been documenting uh, summary executions of, of civilians, uh, force recruitment of civilians uh, that they're using as porters for their uh, weapons and supplies uh, or to do chores in, in their military camps, but also forcing to fight uh, on the front line. Um, so all these crimes we have uh, corroborated uh, detailing in, in our report. Now, you've also raised concerns about um, uh, the appeals to ethnic loyalties that may be inflaming the violence. How does that work into the landscape being seen in, in, in Eastern DR Congo in the pushback against M23? Well, the M23 is uh, mainly led by uh, Tutsi, and they've been uh, increasingly brandishing the identity card uh, basically saying we're here uh, to protect the Tutsi community, which has been uh, uh, targeted. And so uh, we are rising up to protect the, the, the community. But even though uh, there has been underlying uh, uh, discrimination over the, over the years and, and there's a, a history of, of dis discrimination in that sense and uh, questions about uh, identity uh, in the region, no doubt, this doesn't justify in any way the war crimes that the rebel group uh, is uh, committing uh, in, in North Kivu. And in turn, um, the Congolese troops have been using a web of uh, militias that are mostly organized along uh, ethnic lines. Um, and this, all, uh, this is all creating a recipe for uh, potential further ethnic violence indeed. Uh, and what about Rwanda's involvement in, in all of this? Why are you so convinced that it has a part to play in destabilizing the east of DR Congo when it's been very clear about denying any involvement? Well, if the M23 was able to capture uh, so many parts of, of Rutshuru territory, now uh, Masisi territory, uh, both in North Kivu, it's in part thanks to the support they receive from uh, Rwanda, not only logistical support, but also Rwanda has been uh, sending troops on, on Congolese soil to take part in some of the uh, offensive by, by the M23. I think the evidence is uh, for everyone to see. It's been widely documented, not only by our team, but also by UN investigators uh, over the last year. Uh, there's photographic evidence uh, showing cross-border uh, supplies of ammunition, weapons, artillery. Uh, there's uh, videos of uh, Rwandan troops uh, marching uh, through Congolese villages. Uh, there's ample uh, testimonies uh, backing this up. Uh, some Rwandan prisoners, uh, Rwandan uh, soldiers were made uh, prisoners uh, and arrested. Um, so there's a lot of evidence that is uh, out there. Uh, some international governments have now uh, recognized and acknowledged that uh, support, the uh, United States, the French government, the Belgian government, the German government, uh, and even the European Union has uh, called out uh, Rwanda. So I think it's an established fact now, uh, despite the repeated denials by Rwanda. Thank you very much. Thomas Fessy, their senior DL Congo researcher at Human Rights Watch, giving a, a bit of an insight into a uh, new understanding about the operation of the M23 rebels operating in the east of DR Congo and the Congolese military's pushback against them.